Why do we turn down the music in our car to help us see better? And why is alcohol more socially acceptable to drink in public than milk? I'm not here to answer those questions. I'm here to tell you some good news in March that you might have missed. Oh, and before we start, if you hit that subscribe and bell icon, you can stay up to date with these monthly roundups every month. So let's jump into the first story. A new study has found that we can remove up to 90% of microplastics from water just by boiling it and filtering it through a coffee filter. When the water is boiled, calcium carbonate forms. You might have seen this lovely looking stuff at the bottom of your kettle at home. The study found that the small bits that form in the water will trap the microplastics, making them large enough to be filtered out without specialist equipment. And Pakistan has tripled their mangrove forests over the last 30 years, showing us that with the right efforts, positive change is possible. Mangroves are coastal superheroes that not only provide homes for wildlife, but also form a crucial shield against the effects of climate change. This simple model from Dutch Research Institute Deltares makes it super easy to understand how mangroves can protect the coast from the impacts of waves from a heavy storm. In addition to significant ecological benefits, their mangrove restoration is also supporting local communities by maintaining fishing stocks and creating more local jobs. In a huge move for European wildlife, the European Parliament has passed the Nature Restoration Law that aims to restore 20% of the EU's land and sea by 2030. This plan includes restoring 25,000 kilometers of rivers to free-flowing conditions to help reconnect habitats, reversing the decline of pollinator populations by 2030 that are crucial for balanced ecosystems and agriculture, planting over 3 billion trees across Europe to recover degraded and deforested land, and much more. Over 80% of European habitats are in poor shape, so this is a much needed step towards Europe's ecological recovery. Can you guess what my next story is gonna be about? Well, Kenya. Whilst I nipped to the toilet as I drank four cups of tea reshooting this section, here's Dr. Youssef Watu from WWF to tell you about my next story about a huge milestone in Kenya. My name is Dr. Yusuf Watu. I manage biodiversity research and innovation program at WWF Kenya. In the mid 80s, the black rhino population dropped to less than 400 individuals. We are very happy to report that by December 2023, Kenya has more than doubled this rhino population to 1,004 black rhinos in Kenya. We want to thank all the partners who have worked with us to ensure that we achieve this wonderful outcome. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Yusuf Watu and WWF Kenya. And whilst you're here, Kenya, tap that like button to help spread the amazing news. I know I used that same joke twice, but I was up at midnight writing the script, so please take it easy on me. Next story. Scientists have discovered almost 100 new deep sea species living up to 14,000 feet under the sea in the underwater mountains of Chile. 70% of the Earth's surface is covered by ocean, but only a fraction of it has ever been explored. With life in these deep sea conditions being so different to the surface, who knows what else is down there. Now moving from the deep sea to space, a new satellite is set to launch dedicated to tracking methane emissions and their sources worldwide. And it could play a role in holding big polluters to account. Although methane doesn't stick around in the atmosphere as long as CO2, over a shorter period it has about 80 times the warming effect, so getting it under control is crucial in the fight against climate change. In a groundbreaking step, the EU has criminalised the most severe cases of ecosystem destruction, or ecocide, the fourth largest criminal activity in the world. This legislation is designed to target those responsible for serious harm to ecosystems and provide a legal framework to easily hold them to account. Ecocide could come in a lot of forms, from illegal bluefin tuna fishing to polluting protected areas. In the past, organisations and individuals have been able to evade legal repercussions because environmental crimes were not strictly described in law. But these changes could lead to large fines or even imprisonment for offenders. Maori climate activist Mike Smith has been granted permission to take legal action against the largest carbon emitters in New Zealand. These companies are collectively responsible for about a quarter of recent emissions. However, Mike's initial attempt at bringing the law against them was barred by their vast legal resources. Fortunately, the Supreme Court overruled this, stating that climate change is an all-embracing issue and the law must adapt accordingly. So Mike is fighting on and I wish him all the best. Now moving to Cambodia, something huge happened this month, but I'm gonna let the team at Fora and Flora in Cambodia tell you all about it. 
ហើយនៅក្នុងការបង្កកំណើតរបស់កាត់ថ្មហើយនេះគឺជាជំនាញរបងដែលអាចបង្ហាញពិភពជោគជ័យនៅក្នុងការរកឃើញរបស់ក្